Okay, we're going to do a little demonstration uh, with Bernoulli's equation today, and what it's going to involve is just a 3x5 note card, and in this card you'll see there's just a little pin in here, and I'll explain why I have that in a moment. It's just taped in place. I have a spool of thread, and the reason I have the spool of thread is I'm, I'm going to actually put a straw, this is just, just a regular straw that I'm going to put inside this, and then blow air through the straw. The spool of thread, of course, has the hole in the middle there. There are these little sector holes. I've just taped those up because I only want air to go through the middle of this. And so the idea behind this example is I'm going to put the, the pin through the middle of this. And that, that's the purpose of the pin. The pin is to keep it from sliding around. And then I'm going to put the straw here. And obviously, if I let go of the card, it falls, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow through the straw. And then just think about what's going to happen. When I blow through the straw, it's going to blow air against this card. So you want to think about what's going to happen before I do that. So let me go ahead and do it. So you can see that the card actually stays elevated when I blow air through it. When I stop blowing the air, it falls. Let me do that one more time. So I'm just going to put the pin in there to keep it in place. So you can see that the um, blowing the air through the straw actually keeps the card elevated. Do it one last time. Okay, so now the challenge is, why does that happen? Now I'll give you a hint, it has to do with Bernoulli's equation, and I'll work out a little example related to it so you can kind of see how the whole thing works. But I want you to think about it on your own first, maybe try a little, uh, develop a little model, see if you can analyze and understand why it happens. Okay, so let's make a model of the card and straw demonstration. So here is the spool of thread and there's going to be a hole in the middle. So let me go ahead and draw that out. And then we have the card underneath it. Sorry, this these aren't straight lines, but this is the card down here. And the air coming in through the straw will be coming downward. So we'll call that the volumetric flow rate of the air, we'll call it as Q. Again, there's the spool of thread. And then when the air comes out, it's going to go off to the sides and out. Right, so let me first of all draw, I'm going to do a conservation of mass and, and Bernoulli's equation analysis on this. Let me draw it a little bit bigger over here so it's a little easier to see. Here's where the spool is and the card is down here. So there's the card, spool of thread, flow rate Q. I'm going to draw a control volume that looks like this, just going out to some arbitrary radius. Actually, let me change the top of that control volume. I'll just have it look like this. So we have some flow coming in from the top, and it's going to be going out to the sides. And I'm going to just say that uh, this distance out here is just some little radius R, and all the way to the end here will be the radius capital R. Okay, so let me first apply conservation of mass to that control volume. We're going to assume that the air being blown through there is at steady state. So this first integral term, th this one is going to be zero because it's a steady state and then we have our mass flow rate term that I'm writing down right now. So this term will be equal to minus rho q coming in right up through here. So that's the mass flow rate coming in here. And then through this, these sides, remember this is actually a disk or a kind of a circular uh, cross section. It's axisymmetric. So we're going to say that the velocity there is v sub little r. And we're going to say the height is just uh, little h. So going out through those sides, we're going to have uh, the density times the velocity, v sub r, times the area through which it's flowing, which would be 2 pi little r times h. So it's 2 pi r gives you the circumference going around, and then little h gives you the height. And then we can rearrange that, and we'll get the velocity at some arbitrary radius little r is going to be q all over, let's see, it'll be 2 pi, little r times h. 
So that's the velocity at any arbitrary radius. And obviously the velocity at the very exit, um, capital R, that's just right here at the very edge of the spool of thread, would be Q all over 2 pi capital R times H. Now let's go ahead and apply Bernoulli's equation from some streamline that goes from the right at, oops, uh, something just happened there, give me a second. So I'm right at the edge, we're right over here and to this point here. So there's some streamline that goes that way, right? So we're going to go ahead and apply Bernoulli's equation between those points. So this will be point one over here and point two over there. So we'll have Bernoulli's equation. We're not going to worry about elevation terms because uh, as you saw in the demo, there's just a very, very small gap between the spool of thread and the card, and we're dealing with the gas. That elevation difference is negligible. Okay, so the pressure at one, let me zoom out here for a second. The pressure at one will just be the pressure at little r. So I'm just going to put this as P1 is equal to the pressure at little r. V1 is just V sub r, which we just solved for a moment ago. That'll be the Q over 2 pi little r h. Pressure at 2 is going to be atmospheric pressure because it's the pressure right at the edge of the spool of thread. So that'll just be out at atmospheric pressure. And the velocity there, V2, will be the velocity at capital R, which I worked out a moment ago, 2 pi capital R h. So we can substitute these in to Bernoulli's equation and rearrange. And what I want to do is solve for the pressure at little r. So the pressure at little r will end up being, let's see, p atmosphere plus a one half rho. And I'm just trying to do this algebra in my head, so hopefully I don't make any mistakes. Should be one over r squared minus one over little r squared. I think I did that right without any mistakes. And what I want you to do is um, take a look at this equation. You'll notice that we have P atmosphere times some constant, uh, 1 over capital R squared minus 1 over little r squared. So little r, keep in mind that little r is less than or equal to capital R. So that means that this whole quantity will end up being negative. Because, um, because little r is less than capital R, that means this quantity will be bigger than that whole quantity. And so P sub R is actually going to be less than or equal to P atmosphere everywhere. So what that means, this is the, this is the important part in this problem, is that the pressure inside here is less than atmospheric pressure. So if you do a force balance on the card, so let's do a force balance on the card. If I do a force balance on that, then I'll have on the card, you know, so some of the forces in the vertical direction, let's call it the y direction, is equal to zero. You've got the weight of the card acting downward, certainly. You've got atmospheric pressure from below pushing upward. And that'll act over that area. Just, so you've got atmospheric pressure from below pushing upward. And then you'll have this P sub R pushing downward from above. And that you have to integrate because um, you're going to have to integrate that from 0 to capital R over little rings, so that'll be like 2 pi r dr. These are just little annuli. You have to integrate this one because it varies, obviously, with position r. So you have to integrate that. So this is what the, the, the force balance is. The, the reason the card is held upward when... Oh, and by the way, I should before I go any further, I should mention when I did the integral... I only did it out to uh, this part right here. And the reason I only have to worry about that part and I don't worry about these parts on the edge is because it'll be atmospheric pressure on the top and bottom on those edges. And so those will just cancel one another, one another out. The only place where the pressure is going to be different is going to be in this region here. Right? It's atmospheric pressure down below and it's less than atmospheric pressure here. So in the end, what ends up holding up the card when you blow through it is the, the pressure in this region drops because of Bernoulli's equation, because the velocity here is relatively large, right? We just we found what that velocity is. And from Bernoulli's equation, that means the pressure is going to be below atmospheric pressure. And so you have a low pressure here and a high pressure here, and it's just enough that it'll balance the weight of the card. And as far as, you know, how, you know, how, what... You can figure out what kind of gap height 
h, you notice I just left this in terms of h here. You could, you could solve for what that h is if you end up solving this equation, because if you knew the mass of the card, you could, and you knew the, the radius of the spool of thread, you could end up solving for the height here for a given volumetric flow rate. So anyway, that's the analysis that goes along with this little demo. And the reason why we have the card staying elevated when you blow through it is because the pressure here is less than the pressure here. You get the same sort of effect if you ever, um, if next time you're in a hot tub and you have jets of water coming out. So like, let's say this is the side of a hot tub and you've got a place where a jet of water is coming out. If you put your hand, and I'm not a very good artist, but let's imagine this is your hand looking at it from the side. What happens is the, the jet of water gets deflected to the sides. And if you put your hand really close to this exit, so there's just some small gap here, what you'll find is that your hand actually feels like it's getting sucked into the jet. And the reason is because of the same phenomenon. As the, as the water jet gets um, deflected out to the sides, you get a lower pressure in this region compared to the pressure out here on the, on the back side of your hand. And it'll feel like your hand's getting pressed into the jet. So it's the same exact phenomenon.